we're in a, we're in a series that uh, is entitled "Why Evangelize." Why evangelize? And um, you know, every time uh, I let you in on a little secret, every time pastor is teaching something, that's telling you where the Holy Ghost is leading us into something. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Whatever I'm teaching, that's where the Holy Ghost is leading. In other words, whatever we're learning is what we're going to be doing, right? right? We're not just learning this to be learning something, because the Bible says, don't be hearers of the word only, but be what? Doers, Doers thereof, right? Yes. So we're not just Listen, if we if the subject matter is why evangelize, then we're learning this to grow in our faith in evangelism, which means that we're going to be doing more evangelism. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. So, what we what we've done is this series. God has given Pastor ten reasons why we should evangelize. It, it, you know, when I before I started the series, I had like one reason, because God said so. You know, that was enough. And that is, that is enough, really, because he said so. But let's look at these ten reasons, because it's going to strengthen our faith. Amen? Amen? Why should we spread the gospel? And we know the gospel is the good news of Christ. Uh, there's something that just hit me right there. Uh, the gospel is the good news of Christ. One of the things that we have to do... I think about, I was thinking about uh, Minister Darrell uh, just this week about this because Minister, we, we were in a time a few months ago where we would come down here every Friday night and we would just rehearse the gospel. Now, if you don't understand what I mean, see, the gospel is deeper than you think. Yeah, Jesus died for our sins. That would be kind of a short, quick version. But it's deeper than that. And the more you talk about it, the more illumination, more revelation you're going to get on it. So my point to you is, uh, this gospel, this good news of Christ, spend time thinking about it. Spend time praying about it. Because, and spend time talking about it. Because the more you hear it, the stronger you're going to get in your understanding about what really happened. It's, it's, this is... Somebody say, the gospel, the gospel of, Christ of Christ is the message, is the message of, the church. of the church. Yeah, it really is. I mean, there's a lot of other nice messages that we have. Uh, obviously, I'm teaching one on true prosperity. But really, the gospel is the message. In fact, even with the true prosperity message, it starts, what, true, true prosperity is first what, y'all? Spiritual. Everybody should have said that. True prosperity is first what? Spiritual. See, I need you all to get that in your heart. You, you, you have to know that. So, if it's first spiritual, that's telling you that it lines up with the gospel, right? Right. What, some of my favorite scriptures for that first point, that true prosperity is first spiritual. What profit a man if he gained the whole world and loses what? So, so, see what I'm talking about? In other words, what profit a man if he gained the whole world and goes to hell? Right. Or, I'll say it another way, what profit a man if he gains the whole world and he's not born of the Spirit? That's really what I'm saying, right? Somebody say, that sounds spiritual. That sounds spiritual. Yeah, that's spiritual, see? So, true prosperity teaching lines up with the gospel. It's not, it's not something, something else. It line, it's, it's based on, founded on, and in agreement with the gospel. It is about you getting into, how do we define spiritual prosperity? It is what? A love relationship with the Father through the Son. Amen. That's it. And you don't get that unless you receive the gospel. Amen. See how it lines up? You have, so, so this is, why should we spread the good news? Okay. Let's look at it. Why should we spread the good news? Why evangelize? Number one reason was because it is the good news. And you don't want to keep good news, right? You want to spread good news, right? Yes. You notice, hey, did y'all notice how much Pastor been uh, shouting on the mountaintops about that movie War Room? <laughs> huh? Yes. I sent out all kinds of, have you seen it yet? You got to go see. See, I'm spreading good news right now. Yes. See what I'm saying? I, when I got, when you got something good, you got to share it. Yes. 
really, if you got some good news, you saw a good movie, you know, godly movie like that, you tell everybody. I mean, I've been stopping everybody, telling them to go see it. You think I have stock in the movie. I'm serious. You think, you know, the past, maybe Pastor got some stock. Maybe he's one of the pro producers of that thing. Wait, he talking about people talking about that thing. No, it's good news. It's the gospel. Now, same thing even with some things like uh, a good restaurant. Oh, I went to a restaurant the other day, too. It was good, too. I ain't going to tell you all where I went. Now, I'll, tell, I'll let you know if you, if you ask me. It, it, it was a good restaurant. And uh, uh, actually, I'll, I'll tell you, since I love all of y'all, I'll tell you. Brother Richard, some months ago, told me that he went to a restaurant called Truxton. And uh, so I was in Santa Monica, and I happened to see trust in there. I said, let me go try the restaurant, because Brother Richard said it was good. Now, this is a good example of what I'm talking about. I went to the restaurant, and I ate the hamburger, and I said, ooh, I'm sure glad I listened to Brother Richard. This show was good. Then I asked them, I said, now, uh, is this a chain? And they said, no. They said, we have one in Westchester, and we have one in Santa Monica, but we're working on expanding. And I said, well, y'all work on it a little harder because bring one down to Long Beach and Carson or something. But it was good. What am I telling you? See, I, I, I got the can't help it. Something good, you tell people about it. It was, you know, it was good. All right, so it's good news. Spread the good news, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, why evangelize? Like, it's the Great Commission. Yeah. In other words, because God said so. God said this is the mission of the church. It's what I'm telling you to do and what I authorize you to do. There you go. He's, he's saying not only do I want you to do it, but I, I authorize you to do it. All right? And, and if we, listen, we got to do it because this is the great mission of the church. Okay? Reason number three. If we don't, no one else can or will. That's right. And we found that out to be true, right? Because uh, he gave the great commission to the church. He didn't give it to the world. You know, at the end of the, at, on Judgment Day, God won't be able to judge the non-believer for not spreading the gospel because he never gave it to them. You see what I'm saying? He gave it to us. So don't you be sitting back talking about, he gonna judge them for he gonna judge them for something else. He gonna judge, listen. He gonna judge them for hearing it and not receiving it. And that's what he gonna judge them for. But for why said he gonna judge you for having it, not and not spreading it? See, amen. amen. So we we're the ones that got it. We gotta get. We gotta. We gotta uh, get it. Now let's see. Number four, someone needs to help save the souls going to hell at an alarming rate. That's the fourth reason why we need to evangelize. The whole thinking there was that we're in the end times. And have you noticed that, uh, okay, I'll give you a good example. The pastor's got a new little uh, thing going on. I get a little news brief every morning now. And it's kind of cool because instead of me having to get up and read the hard copy paper, I read, you know, online. And I get my little news brief. So let me tell you what, what's, what's one of the things that's going on in my news brief. Do you realize? Somebody say, breaking news. Breaking news. Do you realize here we are in the month of September now? Praise the Lord. First of all, happy September, everybody. We're in the month of September, which is the ninth month of the year, correct? Yes. In the beginning of the ninth month of the year, based on a survey, based on a study from, not survey, but a study, research, uh, that they did on the top 30 cities in the United States of America, we are already at the level of violent crimes and murders that, that we were at last year by the end of the year. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? In other words, in month nine, we're at, in 30 major U.S. cities, we're at where we were last year at month 12 for the whole year. And we got September, October, November, December. We got four more months to, left to, for folks to, to cut up and, be more violent. What is that telling you? The trend is what? People are being more violent. People are killing folk in a greater degree. Now, you know that's true because you look on the news. Anybody watching the news these days? Every day on the news you're seeing somebody get, I mean, 
mass murders has become a, 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 a normal term now. It's like every week there's another mass murder. Now, if you thought, just when you thought you knew everything, and you're like, yeah, pastor, but that's a, that's a white man thing. Then the latest one is a black man went off and shot somebody. Like, Don't be thinking this is just a white thing. It's a, it's a sin thing. It's a you lose your mind thing. It's a act of the flesh thing. So we're going to start seeing some stuff we ain't never seen before. Because really, if you think about it, all over the years, when they would talk about mass murders, it usually fit a profile. Right? And the profile would be uh, age 25 through 45, white, male, you know, fairly you know, educated, etc. Et but my point is now, it could be anybody. It could be a black person. It could be a woman. You understand what I'm saying? It, you're going you're gonna to start seeing all kinds of stuff. Why? Because the spirit of violence and murder is, is on the increase in this world and in this country. So uh, that means that folk are going to hell at an alarming rate, and we better try to save as many as possible, right? right. Remember the scripture says that it is not God's will that any should what? Perish. It, it's not God's will that any should perish. That all should come to repentance. Uh, but we know some are going to perish. We don't know who they are. We just have to try to, try to help as many as we can. All right, now watch number five. Here's the reason number five. Witnessing is easy to do when you trust the Spirit and are led by the Spirit. That's the fifth reason why we should evangelize. In other words, translation. Somebody say, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's not hard. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm really trying to get to you. It's really not hard. You think it's hard, it's not at all. And... I'll give you this. When you first do it, yeah, you may have butterflies. Yeah, you may have a hesitancy. But what's the what's the point? The more you do it, the easier it gets. The easier it gets. Has anybody found that to be true with other things too? Yes. The, I mean, really, the more you do anything, the easier it gets. By the way, by the way, I'll put in a little plug here for study, meditate, pray, and fast. The more you do it, what? The easier it gets. Yes. People always say, uh, I can't memorize any scripture. Hey, the more you do it, the easier you get. It's something about it. You keep doing it, and you'll find out your, your brain will start uh, uh, getting into a system. And it'll, it'll be a lot easier to do. All right, so that's number five. What's number six? We have to witness because God loves everybody. And everyone deserves a chance to hear the truth of God's love and be saved. In other words, um, you know, this is a very interesting point. Because when I go out, you know, past the half, half track will travel. You know, see, how, see, it's just, it's right in my pocket. The track is right. Have you seen these? This, is, this stays, I have to, now, watch this. this if, it's, if it's in my pocket all the time, what is that telling me? It's telling you that I'm in a continual state of reloading. Mm -hmm. I would keep 50 in my pocket. That would look kind of weird. But I just have three or four of them in my pocket. And then I have to keep reloading. But the point of the matter is, here's my point I'm trying to get to you. I constantly challenge myself to remind myself that God loves everybody. So that means that some people that I might not give this to, that's just the people I need to give it to. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about, Pastor? What you mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy for me to give it to black people. So what, what does that mean? I need to give it to some Hispanic people, some Asian people. Oh, watch this one. It's easy to give it to people that dress nice like y'all. What does that mean? That means that uh, I need to give it to people on the side of the road, to folks that look homeless and all that other kind of stuff. Like we did just yesterday with the lady who was out there. You know what, honey? Now that I think about that, I probably had to go to that restroom just for that. Because if we not going to the restroom, we would not have been at that spot. And it was at that spot where we saw this lady. She was on the side of the road with her little baby. The little baby was down on the ground. And they were just asking for food and everything else. And so we gave them uh, some money. 
but we also gave him the track. And the lady was sick, saying, God bless you, thank you so much. So my point is, she she doesn't she didn't have the same skin color that I have. She wasn't Hispanic, she wasn't uh, Asian, she was white. But hey, God, God loves everybody. Can I get an amen? amen? Sometimes we sometimes we really this is a deep statement right here. That's why I have it underlined. It is very easy, and maybe I'm just gonna say it for myself, and I'll let you and God figure it out how you think about this, but I have found that it is easy to overlook the fact that God loves everybody. In other words, it's something you have to actually, it's an idea or a notion that you have to actually address and arrest in your mind. 